friends commit and rollback are very important when we use a transaction with more than one sql statement commit will confirm the permanent change and rollback will undo the changes in the database in this video we'll see when and how we need to use commit and rollback in php code that modifies the data in the database a transaction consists of one or more sql statement if we use begin transaction all sql statements after this together will be considered as a single transaction until it runs commit or rollback so either all these changes complete successfully or none of them at all let's understand it by using them in our php code so here i have a simple add employee form and we have employee name email phone basic salary and allowance so these are the fields in the form this is a simple form i have created using bootstrap 5 i have created a transaction folder in xamp hd docs i have index.php and style.css so just click here and type cmd so it will come to command prompt and then type code space dot so we'll open it in visual studio code if you do not have visual studio code installed you can search in google download visual studio code and go to this site code.visualstudio.com and you can download for windows download it for windows and install it it's very easy and it is very useful for php code development so i go back to here this is my transaction folder and i have a index.php and i have some style sheet here style.css so if you see index.php i am using bootstrap 5 cdn and my custom style sheet you can see there is a form here this is a simple html form and these are the fields employee name then email phone basic salary and allowance and there is a submit button so this is an html file there is no php code in it no database connection when you submit the form when you click on submit we will insert the values in two database tables so you can see we have employees table and employee salary table these are the two tables we will be inserting the form data in employees table we will insert name email and phone and in employee salary table we will insert the employee id basic salary and allowance you can see there is a relationship between these two table there is a foreign key employee id is the foreign key in employee salary table and this comes from primary key of employees table so i have created these two tables in mysql database you can see employees and employee salary table so employees this is the structure of the employees table and id is the primary key email and phone are unique keys and if you select employee salary table we have not created the relationship yet click on relationship view and we want to add the foreign key on delete select cascade on update select cascade column select emp id test database and table select employees and id column click on save so relationship is created you can view the relationship select the test database on the top right corner you will see a designer icon click on designer and you can see the relationship is created here now we'll connect to mysql database we'll use dollar connect equal to we'll create a mysql i object and we need the parameters here first is localhost which is the server and then give the user id we'll use root user and password of the root user is blank and we'll use the test database now we'll check the connection if it is successful or not so if there is any error we'll stop here so we'll use die connection failed and display the error message so in case there is any database connection error we do not want to proceed that's why you are using die here so that we'll stop here we do not want to proceed further else 
so for a testing purpose i am just displaying the connection successful message just to show that connection is successful so if we refresh it now you can see connection is successful it's showing i do not want to display this connection successful so i'll just remove it when the form is submitted we need to get the values from the forms so let's do that so first check if the form is submitted if is set dollar underscore post now see the submit button name is submit so give submit here so when the form is submitted get the values from the form dollar name equal to dollar post so we got the values from the form we just need to insert these values in the database so we'll insert name email and phone in employees table and then basic and allowance will be inserted in emp salary table and emp id will come from the id which is generated in employees table so let's write the sql statement we'll use try catch here insert into employees table first write the insert statement so we have name email and phone values we will not directly give the values here instead we will use placeholders here and we will be using prepared statement so let's give statement equal to we have the connection variable here which is dollar connect so we'll use it here dollar connect then give prepare and give the sql statement here now we need to bind the parameters we have the placeholders three placeholders so we'll do the bind parameter bind param and then we have to give the three variables here name email and phone so let me just copy this and we'll use the variable name and we have to give the type of these variables since all of them are string variable so we'll give sss so bind parameter is run and then execute it so this is the first insert statement and we need to insert into emp salary table also so we'll just copy this emp salaries and if you see we have emp id basic and allowance we have three placeholders here and just copy this paste it here these variables are integer so we'll give i i and i integers and then execute it now we can see there is a emp id here so we need to get the value for this employee id so once the row is inserted into employees table there will be id generated and we need to get that id as employee id so once its execution is done so just add here dollar emp id equal to dollar connect and give the insert id so this will give you the id which is just generated and we'll use that as employee id statement is executed and then give a message here employee added so if there is any error it will come in the catch block and we need to just write the error message here give the exception class here give a variable here echo dollar e get message so what we did here you can see we have one sql statement which inserts data into employees table and there is another insert statement which inserts data into emp salaries table and after these sql statements are executed successfully we are just giving a message here and in case there is any error control will come to the catch block and we are displaying the error message so let us run it and see so let us first see in the database employees table is empty employee salary table also empty add one row click on submit employees added so let's see in the database employees table 
we have the row inserted in employees table and employee id is 1 and then employee salary table you can see mp id is 1 here so we could successfully insert the rows in these two tables so there is no issue here think about the situation when one insert statement gets executed successfully and the other one fails due to some unexpected error then one table will have the data and other table will have no data for the employee so this will make the database inconsistent which is not desirable for our example only we just want to make this insert statement fail during the execution so we'll give a wrong column name here but in the real case it would be some unexpected error like network error so that first insert statement will be executed successfully during the second execution there will be some error so insert will not happen so let's just try this save it and refresh it if you just see the tables here employees we have one row employee salaries we have the corresponding row here so let us try to add another row here test name click on submit so it gives some error here unknown column so let's see in the database employees table you can see there is a row inserted here employee id 2 and employee salary table there is no corresponding row in employee salary table so this is an inconsistent data in the database to prevent this we will use transaction which means these two sql statements will be treated as a single transaction so either both the inserts takes place successfully or none of them at all and as soon as we use commit or rollback transaction ends we will use begin transaction here give dollar connect begin transaction so once we give the begin transaction statement here all the insert or update or delete statement will be treated as a single transaction so until we use commit or rollback so either both of these will be committed in the database or none of them at all so what we have to do so once these two statements executed successfully we will commit here just give dollar connect commit and in the catch block use rollback so either all these changes take place in the database successfully or none of them at all in case there is any error it will come in the catch section and the inserted data will be rolled back the transaction will end as soon as we use commit or roll back you can see that in the second insert statement we have given a wrong column name so second insert statement will fail first statement will execute successfully so if you test now refresh it now again let us just see the database first we have two rows here and employee salaries we have one row the corresponding row is not present in employee salaries table so let us delete this so we have one row employee id 1 and employee salaries table employee id 1 now let us test it again test name test at test.com phone number one on already present submit unknown column same error but now let's see the database employees table only one row employee salary table only one row the first insert statement successfully completed and the second insert statement could not run successfully because of wrong column name and the control directly goes to catch lock and here it roll backs the first insert statement and then shows the error message so that means none of this insert statement committed in the database because there was some error and it is maintaining the data consistency now let us run a successful insert here so we gave a correct column name so we have one row only click on submit you can see employees added message is given now let's see the database employees table you can see the row is inserted in employees table with employee id as 4 and employee salary table you can see the corresponding row inserted here with employee id 4 so in this case it is working fine and it is maintaining the data consistency so that's it for this topic
I hope you learned about how and when to use commit and rollback. If you like it, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. If you want to learn how to insert form data into the database and how to use try catch in PHP, click on the video thumbnails displayed on the screen. Thank you.